Hi, my name is Sarah, and today we're going to do a book review. Oh my god. I have so much feels for this book because the only author that's made me have feels such as these is Sarah J. Mass's Akatar series, which, thank god, is getting more books added to the series. So we can get some more emotions from that. But no, I'm talking about the queen herself, the Magnificent Warden. Yes, for people who get what I'm saying, yes. Today's book review is The Angel Share by J.R. Ward. Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god. Okay, so, non-spoilers. I am just going to say, um, it takes place in Kentucky, and the first book was full of um, conspiracy, love affairs, murder mystery kind of thing going on, and yeah, it has been optioned as a TV show. We haven't got any word um, on how it's going yet so far. Um, a nice comparison, I guess, would be like the ABC Revenge, I would say, but no. I'm saying that, you know, like, Stars, HBO, or Encore need to pick it up because I need this in real life, like, right now. So, um, non-spoilers, like, um, if you like, uh, all that stuff, this is the perfect book. We have characters named, um, Lane and Lizzie who in the past, um, try to have a relationship, but then Lane's why Chantel came out saying she was pregnant and all that stuff and that ended for there but now he's getting a divorce because of a little something something and he's gonna marry Lizzie hallelujah and so we get to see more of Edward the older brother who was kidnapped and tortured in South America and because basically also revolves around their father's death we get an interesting reunion with the so far missing brother Maxwell who was not at all in the last book, and Jen, who finally, the youngest sister, who finally gets steps up to the plate of being a mother, and does right at the end. So, yeah, that's the non-spoilers for this book. That's as far as I'm going to say. For those who have not read this book or The Bourbon Kings, go to the stores, pick it up, read it, and you will probably be wondering the same thing as me as to when is when is the third book coming out and is there a third book coming out because there's so many holes in here that I need to fill up. So yeah, J.R. Ward, The Warden, The Angel Share, part of the Bourbon King series. So yeah, bye non-spoilers. Mm. I have a rain song stuck in my head from when it, where, I forgot what it's called, but it's the one from Vampire Tires. When it's all over. That's it. So it turns out that the angel share, people had like, theories as to why it was called that. Because Edward was in love with this woman named Sutton Smith, who now became becomes the CEO of her father's company, Go Girl. And they thought the angel share is because she signed a contract with William Baldwin, the bastard father of the four innocent children, and basically giving her sh um, share of the company. But it actually turns out that the angel share is an actual term. It means um, the art uh, used in the bourbon making industry. So there you go. I actually like those other theories because they kind of made sense. But oh well. So uh, yes, last book at the very end, we found out that Lane's father committed suicide. But it turns out he was actually murdered. They, uh, <laughs> Lizzie and Greta, they found a finger, a little digit, with a golden ring and a flower bed underneath Lane's mother's windowsill. Yeah, that's not ominous at all. And so, um, and they're bankrupt. Yes, that's basically the whole premise of this book, trying, figuring out how big their father screwed them over and how to get the money back. Because um, William Baldwin, he has been stealing money from the company, stole from his children's trust funds, basically leaving them penniless as well, uh, signed over his wife's rights the moment she became drug-induced 
and stuff. And he's and we found out from the grand god John uh, Lange that his that William Baldwin, the father, has been starting up little companies, and that's it. So uh, they his father has been stealing money, and when Lane's friend Jeff, who's a Wall Street dude, finds that out, he's like, "We need to call the feds now because they're already in millions and millions of." Dollars. Oh, and yeah, the dad took out a loan that needs to be paid off now. If he was still alive. That's all I could say, if he was still alive. Uh, so, yes, Lane has to try to figure out how to get all this money back, keep the company afloat, and just try to keep the Bradford family going. So, yes, he is getting a divorce with Chantel. Thank God. And uh, he proposed to Lizzie! Yay! Even though it was in the pool house, I don't care! Oh, they're finally getting their happy ending. About time. At least someone gets a happy ending. So, yes, there's a murder investigation going on. And there's this cop who, in my mind, I think of the Falcon from Avengers. I don't know why, but he could make the cop. And so, yeah, they're trying to figure out what happened, they're trying to find some missing footage and all this stuff, and Lane already has an idea of who did it, because who was the person that took all of the beatings for him and his siblings when their father was angry at them? Hmm. Yeah, it's Edward. But even though at the end he does confess to the murder of the father and all that crazy stuff, I still say he's being the brother and protecting someone. I refuse to accept that he murdered William Baldwin when clearly so many other people did wanted him dead I mean and so yeah and then we find out that Max is back and the, the detective hinted that the brother was with the older brother before the father was murdered I don't know I have slight suspicion that Max killed him but like I said he's been MIA for years he he kind of rem okay I don't know the actor's name but he this gives off the impression like the guy from the ABC show that I've only made one season, uh, Blood and Oil, the main character guy, you know, he's got like beard, leather, work down, all this stuff, like he was actually making a living for himself, so. Jin. Girlie, you could do so much better than this because she goes along and marries Richard Pifford, little bastard, little weasel, and then we find out her daughter Amelia is home after getting kicked out of school for supposedly sleeping with a professor. She's like, oh, I'm following my mother's example. You know, oh, and by the way, I have friends. I'm meeting up. He's 25. They have a Ferrari. You know, like what my mother did. Girl, stop. Okay, she's going like, uh, I would say like a Lydia thing from Teen Wolf. She's pretending to be all of this when she's really actually super, super smart because we get a call from the dorm mother talk calling Jin asking when Amelia's could come back for finals because she wasn't kicked out. She was just on leave to go attend her grandfather's funeral. And she is the student class president. She tutors kids. She has outstanding grades. And they be they believe, the, the teachers and the staff believe she has great things to store for her. So, yeah, she's a little Miss Marty Pants. And so, um, Jen finds that out. And she, after marrying um, Richard, she figures that this man's going to kill me eventually. He by that look in his eyes he's gonna kill me so she goes trades in her wedding ring well no not the wedding ring the engagement ring the big ass diamond and she gets a lot of gold and she puts it in the deposit box and gives um, Amelia the key and for the guy who sold who traded her ring for the gold and the manager at the bank they're her witnesses and she says um, if I die Richard Pifford killed me so yes Samuel T, the guy who's actually Amelia's um, father, and who's good friends with Lane and his lawyer, uh, finds out that Jin, that Jin has bruises on her, and he's basically saying, uh, "You shouldn't um, deal with this. You're sm you're a smart woman. You don't need him. You're just used to having all that stuff for you. But you're strong. You can do this on your own. And if I, and he also like if I find out he actually has been hitting you, I'm gonna murder him." So, and he's a lawyer, so, you know, how to get away with murder, people. And he, yeah, it, 
I really wanted that to happen. Like, I wanted him to find out what Richard was doing and beat the crap out of him. I just wanted to make that son of a bitch pay. I could rant about my wishes about this later. So, uh, Edward. Yes, uh, we do get to see a lot of Edward because um, Lane's trying to get in contact with him and his brother only uses them dial phones. But he, we mostly see him with Shelby and Sutton. Shelby works on the farm and Sutton is his love, but he doesn't admit to it. So, like, you see how much he actually cares for both of these women and he wants to do them right. He's just not used to doing right because after the whole incident where his father hired him to get kidnapped in South America and refused to pay the ransom hello of course he has trust issues and he just only relies on himself he, he has a weak body he's drunk all the time but he's starting to get less drunk I mean he even goes out like as a friendly thing with Shelby and they go have chicken he convinces her to give this kid who works at his barn a chance so yeah and he goes to meet Shelby, he tries to make things right with her, but both of the women know, like, why does it feel like you're saying goodbye? So, Lane. Dude, I have no clue how to play poker, but oh my god. I wish I was there for that because throughout this whole book, Lane's trying to figure out how to get the money back and keep the company afloat. So he kind of blackmails his friend, Jeff, but then he also makes him the CEO of Bradford Company once they get all that they need back. They find out who leaked the bankruptcy to the press. Tiffany with two eyes. Yeah, you're get fired the moment you try to sleep with Jeff. So yeah, they had a little leak and stuff. And so the, the whole Kentucky state knew about the bankruptcy. But hey, Jeff found the money. Mac, who's in charge of the distillery made a deal with the grain god, John Lange, and they were get, get grain to support them for the year. Um, Mac had product that he was experimenting on and he needed the Bradford Company to live so he could sell his products, which would help them as well. Um, let's see, and then um, Lane did a deal with John Lange. He said like, if he won this gambling, this um, poker game, he would give fifty million dollars, and if he lost, he'd give the painting to the guy. Hallelujah! He won. We got the money. We got the money back. We got the grain coming in. We are gonna make it, people. So yeah. Oh, and he also invited his half brother to the house. Just whenever you want to come, bro. Yeah. The woman who died in the last book who committed suicide, Rosalinda, she has a son who is the spinning image of Lane. Hmm. Not only did Lane's father, William Baldwin, get Lane's wife pregnant, he also had another kid with the woman in charge of their financials. Hey, the kid's kind of cool. He's like, you know, I just want to know about him and stuff, so. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see what else were my favorite parts. Uh, let's see. Actually, I think that wraps it up just a bit. It's just I just finished it, so I'm still railing over. Oh my god! Right as when um, Edward was getting arrested. Oh my god! Miss Aurora, Lane's mama. Well, he calls her her mama because she basically raised him. Ha she collapsed. Yeah, she ha has been having cancer and. The same time when Edward's getting arrested, she collapses and goes into a coma. <laughs> Please, we get one happy ending and everyone else. <clears throat> okay, make it two happy endings. Uh, Leigh and Lizzie are gay, get married, and Jin and Amelia rekindle the relationship. But Miss Aurora and Edward, no! No! Edward is still covering up! My suspect is Max! Ms. Aurora's gonna pull a god almighty and she's gonna get better! Oh yes! Another favorite part in this whole story is Chantel! The only time we get to see her! She's like, I'm here for my things! Lizzie, what did you bring? A limousine? So, get the butler! Oh, the butler quit! We're gonna help you move out! They just grab her crab and start throwing in boxes! Even Greta, she's like, a jaw! She had to get the plastic containers and all that stuff. And then Lang shows up. He's like, John, we need some help in here. And they manhandle all the clothes. And they get rid of her, the little tramp. 
best scene ever. Really wish we had Samuel T beating up the beating the crap out of Richard. Hope he doesn't kill Jin because that would be sad on how Amelia gets her little deposit box working for her. So like, oh my god. No! Yes, this book was mostly focused on the financial issue, but no, there was so much drama, so much twist. The father, the son of a bitch, wrote Edward out of the will and gave um, his other kid $10 million, which is okay considering generous and all that stuff. But dude, if only he was alive, I would put him in a world of her. Oh my god, that's all I can say is, oh my god. Mm. I would give this if anyone, if someone who had no clue what they were getting into read this book, they'd probably give it like a three or a four out of five. Me, I give it ten million stars out of a five star, because, oh, hmm. Look at the pretty picture. That's on the Bradford um, bottles insignia, and I'm believing that's uh, Lane's car. So, yeah, look at the pretty picture for me. Oh my god. Oh man, I could go hours about this rant right now, so I'm just gonna stop myself right here again. If I'm doing the honest thing, five out of five stars, infinity, I need the next. If there, Ward, J.R. Ward, please, if you are doing another book that has to do with the Bourbon Kings, please, Edward is covering up for someone. Miss Aurora makes a miraculous recovery. Lane and Lizzie have their wedding and Shelby or certain needs to claim Edward. I'm fo I'm shipping with Shelby right now. I want to know what Max has been doing this whole entire time he's been gone from Easterly. Uh, Jen. She's going to break it off with Richard the moment she finds out they got, they got money. And Samuel T is going to beat him to a bloody pulp. Mm-hmm. <sighs> And I hope uh, Jeff finds someone for him because little Miss Tiffany, yeah, your ass is fired. So yes. Oh my God! Again, I could go on for hours about this rant. So, outstanding book, a great book for close to the end of summer before school starts. Um, yeah, TV shows, pick it up, pick it up real fast because there's a lot of people, including me, that need to watch it. So. Uh, the Angel Share by the Magnificent J.R. Ward. It is, and I say, the best summer read I have read so far. So, yeah, sorry, it's kind of topping Ekim off right now. So, yeah, my name is Sarah, and this has been uh, the greatest book review ever. So, bye!